Hey, Scott. Thanks for having me. Hey, no problem. Welcome so, back. We're back at the garage of Dr. Scott Lenz, where Scott works for Swing Catalyst. And wanted to talk to you, Scott, because we hear so much stuff about ground force and about having a more dynamic and active backswing and other things like that. But through doing a lot of golf schools and, and things like that, I have seen that it like is not really for everybody. I think that's the case with anything in golf. Um, any tip you've ever heard, any drill you've ever do, could be the best drill in the world for one person and the worst world in, or drill in the world for another person. So it's all about determining what works for each person. And that's, I think, where technology like force plates and things like that can be very helpful. Okay, so let's just recap kind of the idea that was so exciting to people like maybe three years ago or so. Yeah. And then we'll talk about kind of where this can go for people now. So uh, you are going to want to pay attention to this because I think it's pretty exciting. So I'm just going to mimic kind of two ideas of, sure. of how to do it. Oh, I love those arrows. Those are new. Yeah. Check those arrows out, Mike. These force vector arrows. If I really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's great. Okay, good. I love that. All right. So that's new with the dual plate. That, uh, well, you can have it on the single plate. It's just not as fun because there's only one arrow. So. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Okay. So the idea that in force plates, so when I started, first started doing videos with Scott like three and a half years ago, that was so exciting, was that if you take this dynamic, forceful initial backswing, your brain is going to know like, wow, that's a lot of force. I'm going to have to slow that down and put some brakes on it. Mm -hmm. So you do this and then you start using brakes to stop this club because it, it just can't keep going for infinity. But the cool thing about that is like you get some free, you get some speed for free, like some people have said, that the, the same muscles that are used to stop this club are also the same muscles that you use to bring it into the downswing. And uh, so that's kind of the idea that a lot of people had was like, okay, making a, a faster, more dynamic backswing is good. And then you were saying, Scott, then there's a third breaking or a second breaking. So I break it here. Where's the other breaking? Oh, that's when you start going forward, right? Can you sh kind of show us? So you see a lot. And, and this is where we find the long drivers and the really high speed swingers. So I find slow speed swingers and people that aren't that good can still create a lot of forces on the ground. They just can't break them properly. Okay. And it's really the breaking of the body that transfers the energy into the golf club and creates speed. And so the, that's what I find. Oh, the, so you wouldn't really just want it to be o as open as possible and just keep turning it. No, turn. no, oh, okay. definitely not. Um, and it's interesting that like when we hit a golf ball, that, that club is a little closer to vertical than it is to horizontal. Um, and so that horizontal braking mechanism is pretty important. So, you know, you get going this way and you'll find that the, the negative momentum is created in a lot of players before they even move the club. So their yep. negative momentum's done, and then they're pushing back the other way the whole time. I know what momentum is. What do you mean by negative momentum? Momentum going away from the target. Oh, okay, gotcha. gotcha. So if I get mass moving out of velocity this way, away from the target, mm -hmm. um, and obviously the mass is going to move away from the target, so I guess that's the wrong term to use, but um, their, their forces, so the, the ground reaction forces are never acting in a way that the club's moving this way and they're pushing into the ground so that their body's moving this way. Okay. So they're always, so if you look at that arrow there, yeah. if I push towards the net here, you can see how I can make that arrow point backwards. So if I like way. push this way, you can see how that arrow is pushing me okay. to the right. Uh huh. And you'll find in really good, or the long drivers, every long driver that I've seen, that arrow never, that green arrow never points to the right. The second yeah. they get the so negative the stuff going, yeah. uh -huh. so that, that arrow points to the right, and then as the club moves away, they're pushing or getting that reaction force shoving. That green arrow the is never pointed towards the right, you said? So yeah, like away from the target. Yeah. Like, I'm so, like away from the target. Yeah. Can you show us how they do it? Is um, it well, so yeah. what, where I kind of learned it or picked it up was from Berkshire. Yeah. So you'll see Berkshire do this, stomp, 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 uh -huh. and as soon as the right foot hits the ground, the club moves away from the ball. But you see, the second my right foot hit the ground, that force vector points towards the target. Yeah, yeah. So it yeah. means I'm constantly throughout the whole motion of the club pushing down and away from the target and creating mm -hmm. forces. So they, it, it's a really interesting pattern, and it's, it's helped me gain a lot of speed in my game. Okay. Um, that, but I've worked with a bunch of players where that actually slowed them down. Okay. Um, yeah. Again, it's not for everyone. Yeah. Um, when I first found now, it, do you think that it's good for you? you like you're a hockey player, and yeah. you're, you're used to going like side this to and side. This. Yeah. So doing that shifting feels good to you, and it gets contained. me more pressure shift off the ball. 
Uh -huh. And what's good for me is that that stomping gets me pressure shift off the ball, like more pressure into my right side without getting my mass way over into my right side. Because mm -hmm. if I get my mass right and my pressure right, I'm not a good enough athlete to recover from there. And then right. I hit some squirrely ones. Right, okay. Either hit fat or... So uh, so talk about that final break. So you, that's kind of the breaking this way. Yeah. And then there's a well, then big... As you turn around and you start creating momentum of your body moving forward, yeah. you have to be able to break or pull through that leg to transfer that energy down to the golf club. And the best players in the world or the, the longest hitters that I've seen, the vertical force always peaks with that horizontal break. So they're mm -hmm. they're breaking and putting vertical through the ground at the same time, okay. which I think creates that very dynamic, okay. using physics to speed up the club. So that so I'll, tr I'll try one like that. Sure. Just, just, and we'll try to do a, a dry capture of this. So just do a couple stomps, and as soon as your right foot hits the ground, take the club away. Uh, okay, like, I got you, I got you, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So that's where, Let's um, see. I'll show you here. That All right, at least I'm peeking above the dark, the dark gray bar. <laughs> yeah. Except for the torque, so you're going to break out the rubber band on me, I can tell already. <laughs> oh, I love the arrows in the review. This is yeah. really cool. So this is what I, I find is really cool that you see you're putting like tour level horizontal forces uh -huh. into the ground and the club hasn't moved yet. Huh. See, That's like cool. when you're stomping back and forth. The club's not moving, but those arrows are getting long. And this is kind of like revving the engine, right? Mm -hmm. and so you're not starting from dead still. You're putting a lot of force into the ground before you even go. But you'll see you got a negative force here. That's where you're on your left foot. Yeah. And see the negative horizontal force means that green arrow is now pointing away from the target. Yeah. So you're creating some force that's pushing you away from the target. And you'll notice that as soon as that right foot stomps down and starts changing the direction of that green arrow. Now it's right inclinated the towards the target. Yeah. Moves away from the ball. Yeah. And you'll notice now for the rest of your backswing, that green arrow is pointed towards the target. It never turns around and goes the other way until here where we have to slam on the brakes and that's the second braking force right here. So see in the downswing, mm -hmm. late downswing, yeah. is where we wanna see that go negative. Yeah. But you'll see that this is the point right here where it crosses zero, Yeah. where we see a lot of long drivers, that's the second the club starts to move. And so like do an opposite swing now. Yeah, okay. Where you just start from still and kind of like take the club away and kind of move into your right side like you would kind of old school. So before I was really stomp, stomp, yeah, stomp, stomp, start go. From still. Okay. So and then just like take the club away and kind of like turn into your right side the whole time. Hang on one sec. Do you want to hit one now? Where'd the ball go? Sure. I got it. Just hit one because it makes it easier. For yeah, sure. Who cares where it goes? <laughs> well, I have shanked it in this garage before. <laughs> That's okay. Through the through through there. <laughs> right in the washing machine. <laughs> no, not the way. It was through oh, it the door right through to the, the door. neighbor's house. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there you go. Good. All right. So that was very static. Like yep. I was trying not really. You should see a much flatter yeah. zone before the, the club was taken away. Yeah. Okay. So much quieter on the yeah. pumps. Yeah. And you actually didn't create any negative there either, which is interesting. So you can see you just kind of went down to zero and then started taking the club away. Yeah. You still were able to keep this vector pointed towards the target the whole time. See how it was positive? Yeah, that's kind of like, you know, with Nicholas, he would say swing inside your shoes, right? Right. Inside your feet. But try to get one where you move because you'll see this often in... Um, okay, I think I know what you mean. Or do the opposite. Mm -hmm. Like make sure, make your, like you, you can actually do a little stomp, but make your left foot hit the ground and then take the club away. So I, I want to feel more like this. Yeah. Like it, actually that works really well. If you just stomp a little bit, and instead of when your right foot hits the ground, you take the club away, have your left foot hit the ground. You can almost do a little step to the right. Oh, so you know it will look like this, Scott, like this. Yeah. And I sometimes when I do this one, I'll, I'll like take a little step to the right as I'm taking the club away. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> There's the shank. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't do that. <laughs> So you can see now as the club moves away from the ball. Oh, there it's inclinated towards. Yeah, it's away moving from the... backwards, right? So you're creating and you actually are still pretty good at turning it around pretty quickly because you'll see a lot of people where the club moves away from the ball right here. And so the club's moving away and they're creating that negative momentum. Scott, is it common with slicers for this green arrow to stay inclinated that way? I haven't seen that too oh, much, okay. but it's it. 
like it, it stays that way for a little bit of the backswing, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that means you're pushing into the ground like towards the target, which is creating the ground shoving you back and the clubs moving back, yeah. which makes it really hard to stop it, turn it around right. and get it going back forward. Um, and so I haven't seen a really good player do this, where there's that make big massive negative as the club's moving away from the ball. I've had some pretty good players that are pretty flat lined before the So something that you just don't see good players do is you don't see good players get the club moving and their pressure moving at the and same the time. And the forces, yeah, moving. Because it's not, it's not balanced. Well, it just takes a really long time to stop it, turn it around, and get so it. So go back to live view, because I want to see if I get this right sure. as far as in the arrows. That. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to make it happen. Because as soon as your right foot hits the ground, you're pretty good at making it. Yeah, there you go. So you almost got to... <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then, yeah, okay. Because obviously as your right foot hits the ground, it's going to create that braking mechanism to stop you from going backwards. Yeah. Another really important braking mechanism that we've learned from uh, a lot of the long drivers, because yeah. your, your backswing isn't just a horizontal backswing, right? There's some rotational aspects to your backswing. Mm -hmm. And a good rotational break is actually trying to screw your foot into the ground, like externally or mm -hmm. clockwise. Uh, sorry, this uh, that's the Clockwise. counter. Yeah. Though. So yeah, if see how if you could screw your foot into the ground. So basically, what it means is like if I just turn my pelvis and I don't do anything with that foot, my foot spins this way. Yeah. But if I can actively try to screw my foot in the ground, that creates a reaction force uh -huh. that actually decelerates your pelvis from rotating. So there's two ways to kind of decelerate the backswing. Right. It's more in the frontal plane, which would be like sticking that right foot in the ground, kind of the stomping. Right. Kyle Berkshire thing. And then if I'm a very rotational backswing person, then I got to feel like I'm twisting that foot in the ground to stop me and okay. turn me back the other way. So in a perfect world with a golfer with a perfect body and using all the forces, you know, equally, yeah, equally and like maxed as much as they want, then yes, the backswing should be a dynamic fast thing. Then you can recruit more and then you can snap it. 100%. And in something like long drive where it's just about speed and the best guys are going to be, you know, uh, kind of through with survival of the fittest, sure. you know, you're going to see all those guys do that. Yeah, you see that. But um, but this is not something that's like universal, even on the PJ tour. No, no. So, you'll see so a lot. what I want to talk about today is that because um, I've seen that when people start stomping around and they really start trying to get a dynamic backswing, especially if they don't have like maybe good core strength or maybe good arm strength or so many different issues. But we see the center mass of the club get uh, flopsy. Or like this or something like that. Thing? Yeah, flop, slinky, <laughs> flopsy, something like that. It gets it gets flopsy, and uh, and then they have to sl sling it sling it back out. So they've done this fast backswing, yeah. but maybe there's something in their system doesn't have enough to handle that. Right, and so this kind of so comes back comes to comes up with this other pattern that is a good way to play golf still. Yeah. Okay. So um, this kind of comes back to what we talked about. I don't know, three and a half years ago uh, was Venture's concept of resistors and releasers. Okay. So you think about like, I mean, if, if you go back to a couple of years ago at the PGA Championship, Phil Mickelson was hitting it as far as anyone, right? And he had a really long backswing, you know, that heel comes off the ground, mm -hmm. he really released it. And it wasn't super fast backswing, right? It was right. like loading up and, and basically they're getting their speed from a wider hand path. Okay. Whereas if you see like John Rahm, who's a very short backswing, quick backswing, turn it around fast. Okay. And so it takes a much different nervous system to do it John Rahm way. Okay. Um, and so what happens on your backswing, like you were talking about, if you take it away quick, you start to stretch all these muscles. And when you stretch a muscle, there's a little signal that goes off in the muscle that sends a message to your brain. That's your body's protective mechanism, right? Mm -hmm. If we stretch a muscle really fast and really far, we're going to tear it eventually. Okay. So we have this, these things called muscle spindles. So as you stretch it, it signals your brain like, uh oh, something's wrong. It actually doesn't go to your brain. It just goes to your spinal cord. It's a reflex action. Okay. And then it triggers it back and it causes the muscle to shorten really quickly. Mm -hmm. So really springy reactive athletes have really good ability to use those spindles to create like that force for free. Like you're talking about that okay. muscle force for yeah, free. Yeah. What we know is that system doesn't work so well as we get older. Like mm -hmm. basically the, the test that your doctor uses to test that is when they hit your knee in the, yeah, in the yeah. doctor's office. How quickly it is. Yeah. And if you look at like a little kid, it's like pew. Yeah. And you see like a, right? Yeah. As you get a little older, it doesn't work quite so well. Okay. And so, and even some younger people, it doesn't work so well either. Because mm -hmm. I've worked with some really high level athletes or golfers that I would say probably don't have a very active nervous system and not very much 
of that springiness or that rebound potential. Mm -hmm. um, and they still play great golf. Like you can still hit in the fairway. You can still hit decently far. Yeah. Um, you just need to do, use a different strategy to do it. Okay. So we're going to try one. So my question is then with that is because I think then when you start getting too slow, then you can kind of feel like you're not getting the forces in the right order. Feels like you know when you're doing steps or whatever else like it kind of happens naturally yeah as so, with anything i yeah. mean i think anything in the golf swing can be overdone or underdone okay and so getting what's optimal for you is the key so let's make this a good value for the people who are watching it so sure. what's what's a good way even if they don't have swing catalyst or can't see you, you or one of your certified guys yeah to figure out like okay is a am i still dynamic enough or am i dynamic enough and athletic enough to to utilize the good stuff from yeah. a fast backswing right or would i be better off like moving slower i mean there's a couple different ways you can do it like venture does a jumping test okay so yeah, yeah. you could if you just found a wall somewhere put some put some uh chalk, chalk on, on your, your hand yeah, or something yeah. like that and do a jump where you like bend down jump up and tap as high as you can yeah, yeah. and then do one where you kind of squat down hold it for a couple of seconds mm -hmm. and then jump up and see which one's higher mm -hmm. The theory is if you bend down and jump up and it's higher, then you'd be better John Romway. Okay. And if you start from static and go up and that's higher, then you'd be better Phil Mickelson way. Okay. Um, that's a good, that's a good one, yeah. assessment to try it. Mm -hmm. um, or you could just hit balls. I mean, I think one of the best things I learned from John Dunnigan and uh, Will Wu, who have the Skilled Coaching Alliance. Yeah. Anything you're working on in your golf swing, and John always says the best golf teacher in the world is Goldilocks. Try it both ways. Try it uh -huh. extreme both ways okay. and see which one's better. Let's do that. That sounds fun. We'll yeah. Try, we'll try it. All so right. give me a Phil Mickelson. Okay. So I want you to release the left heel. The problem with the releasing of the left heel is there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, but I want that heel off the ground as high as you can get it. I mm -hmm. want the biggest hand path. Yeah. You want to get like okay. beyond parallel right. and then just smash it in. Okay. Do we want a club head speed in case you miss it? Here, let's sure. put a dot yeah. on there. So we're gonna Okay. Didn't quite see the heel come off the ground there, but let's give you one more shot at that it one. Felt good. It was hit well. Yeah. So launch monitor says 93.8 club speed, which is that seven iron? Yeah. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And it says one three smash. One three smash. Uh one twenty two ball, one six eight carry. Okay. All right. Let's try it again. We'll measure this. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah, I got to go a little more extreme, huh? I think so. Okay. So I'm just going to. I want you to see that heel way off the ground. I think that's okay. a real. Um, I want you to feel like you're almost like, yeah, there you go. Okay. Because that's going to really extend your hand path as far okay. as it can go. Okay. Missed the ball, but. 91.6 a little slower okay a little slower than the last one okay yep. now i want you to do the opposite of that okay okay so the opposite is, so i'm going to feel like a shorter hand path and a and a really quick back swing quick uh, okay. back and rebound so, so it's going to be more like there you go yeah okay. let's try that okay is that exactly 6. the same, or did it not? I must have it. missed it. I think it meant, all right, all right. <laughs> Try again. Maybe it was blinking when I when I'll, I. I'll uh, get this set up a little better for you. There you go. You're yeah. good now. All right, so now we're gonna go shorter backswing, very short and fast backswing. Yeah. Okay. A little further carry, a little more solid strike. Ooh, slower though. Yeah, it was a little slower. One, uh, it was 90 club head speed. Yeah. And so generally when I oh, do a, a Goldilocks drill with somebody, uh. you are exploring the extremes. And so I would ask somebody, if you had to play golf in one of those two ways, if I said you could only play golf in one of those two ways, which one would you choose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 the second one, I the think. The second one? Yeah, yeah, I think. Let me try the second one again. <laughs> one more time. Okay. Let's try I, it again. I think just get, okay. Was that near El Jose yes. there? <laughs> it was. 90, so it's still a little slower. It is a little slower, you're right. Um, this could be where, you know, 10 years ago, that one might have been optimal for you. But, yeah. Um, I think 
I think everyone, as we age, generally, unless we're doing a lot of dynamic jump training mm -hmm. and really reactive plyometric kind of stuff, I think that's where you possibly could keep your sure, yeah. system the yeah, place sure. where it's, which most of us don't do as we get older. We probably should do more of it. Um, and there's lots of ways to train it. Um, there, there are lots of ways in the gym to make yourself do that mm -hmm. um, or be better at that. But I think the, the faster, more dynamic backswing also puts joints at different positions uh -huh. where I think generally the longer one is a little safer for the body, mm -hmm. if I had to make a generalization. So I don't think it really, um, I don't know. I think some people don't want to let time win. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> give, give, give into it. <laughs> but um, I don't, I, there's no harm in. But yeah, I mean, if there's, if, because to me, if it's not any faster, then I, I might as well, I would rather be a little bit more careful and slower to, with the positions in the backswing and yeah. stuff, you know? If I'm not really gaining much by going back so fast, right. then you might, I might as well yep. make sure it's in the right position. Exactly, spots. yeah. So I think that would be a good drill, just doing Goldilocks mm -hmm. uh, to figure out what works best for you. And what you'll find is, as with most things in life, the answer is probably gonna be somewhere in the middle. Ooh, that was slower. Well, I wasn't trying to release, oh, just, now that okay. was just slow. Okay. That was sl slow, but not um, long. And that's where, yeah, the answer is probably going to be somewhere in the middle. So you, uh, where in the middle, though, is the question. Because you don't have to play golf on the extremes, right? Right. Um, so if we did this and this, and you're like, I think this one's faster, but let's drop it off a little bit. So uh -huh. maybe make it a little more dynamic on the backswing, but keep the heel up and, okay. and test that. And so, yeah. because as with anything, anything you're working on in your golf swing, try the extremes and then dial it in for yourself. And it's a good warm up for the day so um, the big question scott is for people who find that they hit the ball like smash factor better they hit it more online with this slower way mm -hmm. how do they still then get the most out of that and like hit it as far as they can with these bit slower uh backswing dynamics? yeah well this is where you need to have more time to put work into the club so okay. you need to either think of and this is where it really depends what we're finding is very horizontal players like me who mm -hmm. push side to side better need a more vertical hand path. So they got to get a big mm -hmm. hand path and reach the club up high. That's really helped me recently because yeah. it matches how my lower body works. Whereas a more rotational player is going to want a deeper hand path okay, right. to make that match. So really think about yeah, stretching that out more. Yeah. Um, Ninety point zero. Yeah, for me, especially like with some of the stuff where you know they they talk about like pull the club out of the mud and stuff, yeah. and then you get higher with the higher hand path. Yeah. Then I'm not like getting as low as I need to. You know? Right. Well, and that's where I've had a lot of people come by and see me where they they try to do that because everyone says about getting your center of mass up in the back swing right and then lowering it in transition yeah that takes a really reactive nervous system oh okay so be right. able to go up in the back swing lower in transition and then up again in time to hit it that one two three has I, to happen so fast i yeah. can't do it so yeah that's where even if you feel like your lower body is staying lower in the back swing your center mass is still raising because the arms and the club are going up but that oh, little gotcha. squatty feel in the backswing can be helpful for people who hands who high, but off. don't let the body, uh, yeah. the the butt come off the wall or yeah, whatever. Like stay yeah. in a more squatty lower body position. That sounded more solid. It was, yeah. Eighty nine and a half. So, but that was about, yeah one three smash factor. So I really like that. Where, for me, like I could like I could definitely play like that. Where I could go long big tall here but feel like my butt doesn't come off the wall yeah. as far as like i'm staying down here that way i don't have to do three things down in such a small amount of time i agree yeah okay i like that's that that's very difficult to do for a lot of people i mean i'll even tell some older people just get a little more squatty at setup because uh -huh. it just takes so long for that energy to get out of the system so mm -hmm. um and it, it doesn't matter i mean you just got to swing for the way that your body is mm -hmm. designed or works at this particular t moment in time and you know, you can go to the gym and try to change how your body works. Sure. Most people don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> it is because it takes a lot of time to, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. This is great. If you guys are interested in more about Dr. Scott, I'll put his contact information below, or you can just go to swingcatalyst.com. 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 They got a lot of exciting information on there, and you'll see more videos with Dr. Scott that we're filming today come out later on Be Better Golf. If you hit the subscribe button, 
Thanks for watching. Really exciting announcement that I was talking to Dr. Scott and we are going to be doing a Be Better Golf School at the Grand Golf Club in San Diego on April 3rd and 4th. Dr. Scott is going to be there with his Swing Catalyst Dual Forge plate, the same one that he just used in the last month with Colin Morikawa and Tony Finau and other PGA Tour players. He's going to have that down there with his Foresight Machine. And the great coach Lee Dietrich will also be there for Be Better Golf School. It's going to be a very small school. There's only going to be about six or seven students there for two days, really getting deep into the forces that you can create to make your most powerful and consistent golf swing. It's really something that you can't just figure out on your own because you can't really ever guess it. You have to be able to see what's going on under the hood of your swing. And the best way to do that is using the Swing Catalyst plate and also the expertise of Dr. Scott, the number one ground reaction force scientist in golf. So really exciting opportunity. Go to BeBetterGolf.net slash school or send me an email with any questions to contactBeBetterGolf at gmail.com. Lots of new videos coming out with Scott, Lee, and Mike Malaska, and Blake Cannon, and a bunch of other things coming up on Be Better Golf that you're going to want to see. So click the subscribe button. Thanks. Bye.